Hey everybody, it's Joe, and I've gotten a lot of requests recently about this new $100 3D printer fundraising campaign, and people want to know my opinion on it, and is it legit, and should they go ahead and jump on it? Now, I'm going to be talking about a specific campaign in this video, but I hope that the ideas and processes that I'm teaching and talking about in this video can be applied to future campaigns as well. So let's jump in and talk about the Gufu Cube. Gufu Cube, $100 3D printer. It, it tickles your fancy and immediately makes you want to click that back it button and, and make it work. But uh, the first step, the first step whenever you see something like this before you back it is to say, why? Why do I want to back this? What about this campaign is tickling my fancy? Now, first of all, $100. Yeah, it's a good price. It's a great price. And, you know, it's almost at that price where if this doesn't deliver or if it ends up being a piece of garbage when it arrives, you can just throw it away and not worry about it. Or many people can. A $100 loss is, is not going to break the bank. And if it is, you probably should not back this campaign. Also, it's got a lot of great features, like the fact that it's it's really easy to put it together. It's got an app that you just push a button on, and it communicates wirelessly to your 3D printer, and the 3D printer jumps to life and prints it. I've seen that before, and trust me, I love that feature. It's so easy to use. They promise that whatever you're printing won't take more than 30 minutes. Well, who wants to wait for a 3D print? It must be fast. It's got a 0.7 millimeter nozzle. Oh, that's why it's fast. Okay, well, that's that's not too bad. So it's it's simple, it's Wi-Fi, it's, it's hitting all those points that, uh, quite frankly, it's delivering every promise that I want to see in a 3D printer myself. I want a 3D printer like what they are promising, and maybe, just maybe, this is the one that will deliver on those promises. So once we've asked the question of why do we want it, we now need to like that's the pros think about the cons what are the red flags what are the things that might warn you that this is i don't want to use the word scam that this is not a safe backing well the first thing that jumps out to me is that we're on indiegogo and not kickstarter and and there's nothing wrong with indiegogo indiegogo is a fine platform run by fine people but Kickstarter is often a more safe platform, especially for tech projects. For something like this, I would feel a little bit safer on Kickstarter because Kickstarter has been known to, if a project is being provedly false, that they will shut it down. Indiegogo, on the other hand, they'll let it go. Also, Indiegogo will give your money to the backers even if they don't reach their funding goal. However, this one did reach its funding goal and its funding goal was only a thousand dollars meaning they're not having to deliver or they're not having to develop this 3d printer it's it's already developed they're ready to go this was just a pre-order system and for some people that's a red flag that's less of a red flag for me but for some people it's like oh, come on then use a pre-order system don't use this crowdfunding stuff but i will say this crowdfunding stuff great advertising copy all they have to do is say it was funded within its first 15 minutes and, and everybody wants it. it it creates that ooh, i want to be a part of this the next you know next thing that might be a red flag is who are these people have they ever done anything before and you know the funny thing is i found a couple of cute uh, clues <laughs> one of them is that it's called a cube 3d printer also the app for it is called the cube app cube cubify i've heard that before the cubify 3d printer was a 3d printer that was uh, not created by but they were bought by 3d systems and it was 3d systems first attempt at getting into the home market and it was a abysmal failure for a number of reasons one it had chipped filament and it just it was overpriced and undersized. It, it was well engineered. They didn't slack on the engineering. And so in my opinion, it actually wasn't 
super overpriced, but there were 3D printers at the time that delivered a lot more in, in size and capability than this printer did for a lot less money. Now, I did some more digging and there is another Cube 3D printer. Uh, they made a Cube 2 and a Cube 3 and they did not get very good reviews. And again, it was the same thing. It's undersized, overpriced, but it does work. So yeah, these guys have some experience making 3D printers. In fact, they have some great experience making 3D printers if it's the same people. And I think it might be. They're under a different name now, but they've had some experience. Now, is that a red flag that they've made a bunch of crappy 3D printers in the past that, that haven't really delivered? Again, they're not crappy 3D printers. They were great 3D printers. They were just overpriced that were market failures. Actually, for me, that's that's a plus side. They know what they're doing. They've had some mistakes and they've learned from their mistakes. So maybe that's actually not a red flag. That's a green flag. Hey, these guys are learning and moving forward. But then this cube app, I was like, oh, have they made this before? So I went to their website looking for the cube app and I found the cube print software. OK, here it is. The app only exists on Apple. Uh, for Apple devices, and I'm an Android guy, but there's a Windows system, uh, Windows version here. Let's, uh, yeah, let's download that Windows version. It is discontinued. If this is their app and it's discontinued, how's that work? Also, if this is their app, how come I can't get it now? I would love, it, it would be in their benefit for me to be able to get this app and start getting excited about the things that I could 3D print. I would like to be able to scroll through their app and bookmark all the things that I want to 3D print for days once I get their printer. That would be a great way to build anticipation and excitement. And for people who are so good at ad copy, that should be absolutely one thing that they want people to do, and yet it looks like they don't. Maybe this isn't the same people. Maybe the cube is just a coincidence, but where's the app? In fact, I'm a designer. I want to get on this app. I want to put my stuff on their app, and, and I can't do that. You know, no, take a look at this picture right here. Let's zoom in on this picture a little bit. Here is a picture of the 3D printer surrounded by 3D prints. And most of these 3D prints did not come from this 3D printer, could not come from this 3D printer. Uh, first of all, look at this rocket. That is way too big for this 3D printer. Uh, maybe it was done in parts. Yeah, maybe, probably not. But then like over here, we got Wexter's Batman and we got Flowlistic's low poly Pokemon. And they're both multi-material prints. I couldn't find where this bender head came from, but again, it's a multi-material print and this is not a multi-material 3D printer. Now they've, they've taken the 3D printer and they've surrounded it with pretty 3D prints. That's marketing, but it's also dishonest. And yeah, if dishonest marketing is a red flag to you, then there's a red flag for you right there. Another thing that I noticed is I was digging into it. I was looking at their video and I was looking at their app and let's zoom in on this. They show their app here and they say, Hey, you can connect and select and print. And I said, Oh, I know, I know that model right there. That model is the Captain America shield from, uh, MMA 1106. And it's been on Thingiverse since 2013. This is an old model, but how did it get? on their app, did, did MM, uh, Eming 1106 approve of it on their app? And then I was digging through a little bit more and they have this little animation here and it's, it's in their video too, but just flying by right here, just for a second, you see this little checkerboard pattern here. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I know that picture. I know that picture because I took that picture. I modeled this and it's on their app and they didn't ask me to put it on there. Maybe their app just scrapes Thingiverse. Maybe, maybe it's innocent. Maybe they're not just populating stuff. I mean, technically, okay, technically this was released with a Creative Commons attribution share alike. So as long as they give me credit for the model, 
as long as they put my name on it, then okay, it's fine for it to be on the app. At the same time, I'd like to check out the app and I'm on the app and they never talk to me about the app. So, okay. Now I will also point this out. They point out that you can plug it in by USB to your computer and 3D print directly to it. So it's not necessarily tied to the app. And that's actually a good thing because it means that if they ever cancel their app, it doesn't brick your 3D printer. Okay, so we've been digging into this, looking for the red flags, and we found a couple of red flags and a couple of actually green flags as we were digging into it. So we've done step one, where we ask ourselves, why are we so excited about this? We've done step two, where we look for the red flags and, and potential danger points. Step three is what other people have been doing and why I'm making this video, reach out to somebody who has a little bit more experience. Now, these people who have reached out to me and said, hey, what do you think of this 3D printer? What they probably didn't know is that I already knew about this campaign because I was contacted by these people and they asked me if I wanted to review their 3D printer before the Kickstarter campaign came out. And I gave them my standard answer. Yes, I would like to, but I maintain editorial control and I'll release it as soon as the video is ready. They said, well, our campaign's coming out in one to two weeks. Can you get the video out done by then? And I said, hey, listen, I will commit to that if you want me to. But keep in mind that when I commit to making a video in a certain amount of time, if my experience is bad, it will not be a good video. And I have committed to you to put that video out. Is that really what you do you want to commit to that before you know what sort of experience I'm having with that printer? Or would you rather let me have the time that I need to try and get a positive experience out of this to share that with people? And they didn't respond at all to me on that one. It took them a long time to respond long enough that it was pretty clear that they weren't going to do it. Now, you could interpret that as they lack confidence in their machine and they're afraid that it's not going to go well. And if they had confidence in their machine that they would have said, yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and do it. Or maybe there was a Chinese holiday that happened during that time and put them on a delay. There was a Chinese holiday that put them on delay. So, so there's a reasonable explanation as to why they didn't jump on that right then. But they also, they were trying to put this into my hands two weeks before their campaign launched. So that's, that's not a good way to do it either way. I reached back out to them after digging into this and going, you know, actually all the things that you're promising are things that I want to see in a 3d printer that my audience would like to see in a 3d printer. I'll, I'll do my best to get a good video out in time for you. And they still didn't respond until like right afterwards. And they said, well, we'll think about it and lack of confidence. I, I don't know. So now you've got all the information on hand. You've seen the positives, you've seen the potential negatives, and you've heard from somebody else who has a little bit more experience. You can make the decision as to whether or not to back this campaign. But what if they're delivering by December? If you're getting this campaign, you're thinking, I'm going to have a 3D printer for my kids for Christmas, right? That's what you want, maybe. And if that's what you want, there are better ways to do it right now. For instance, let me let me give you let me give you some alternatives so that you can have something else to look at. First of all, the Toy Box 3D printer has an app. It's super easy to use. It's the easiest 3D printer I have ever used. Unbox it, you don't assemble a thing. It comes ready to go. Hook it up to your Wi-Fi and go with it. I'll have a link to the video where I talk about this. If you want a 3D printer that is easy to use in time for Christmas because they are already delivering right now, get the toy box. But maybe $250 is a little bit out of your, your price range. And I mean, that's, that's not bad. That's a good price for a 3D printer. But if that's a little bit out of your price range, the cheapest 3D printer that I would recommend is the King Rune KP3S. 
it's a hundred and eighty dollars i think or 160 dollars depending on where you get it and when i think it's 160 dollars 160 dollars and this 3d printer is a tank it prints extremely well when i got it and again video in the cards about this one but when i got it i printed for on for weeks on it and it was super super easy to use super great to use but uh, not as easy to use as an app you actually have to have a little bit of technical confidence you got to get used to that slicer and and getting things ready and stuff like that but if you've got i would say if you're getting this for a kid who's uh, eight and you're willing to help them or 11 and they're just strong with the force this is a great printer at a great price if you absolutely cannot afford a $180 3D printer. There is, of course, the Easy 3D K7. It's $80, uh, $80, $90 if you order it from China, which I would be concerned about getting that in time for Christmas. Let's see, it's October now. Yeah, you could probably get that by Christmas if you order it now. Um, but uh, if you order it on Amazon, I think it's like $120. This 3D printer works. It functions and it is this cheap. It's a little bit harder to use than other 3D printers, but it does function. It does deliver, and and I've done some great prints with it, and I really enjoyed using this printer. Uh, Easy 3 does great stuff on an extremely low budget. So there you go. There are some alternatives for you if you absolutely if you want to have a 3D printer and have a sure thing a Fundraising campaign is not a promise of delivery. You are simply living on hope. And many, many people have had those hopes dashed over and over again. Then again, this 3D printer is, is one that I am interested in. Because if it delivers on what it promises, then I, I could absolutely recommend this 3D printer to people. In fact... I'll say this, I'm a reviewer. I put myself between you and bad 3D printers. I'll back this campaign, okay? I'll get the 3D printer, I'll pull it apart, I'll use it, I'll, I'll put it together, and I'll tell you guys about my experience. And if it's a good experience, yeah, you're not gonna get it at the $99 price, but you'll still get it at a great price and you'll get it knowing that it's a safe buy whereas right now you're just hoping and a lot of people's hopes have been dashed and and there's enough red flag like for instance the fact that they timed this for christmas so that it would tickle that fancy of yours to say "Ooh, i could have this 3d printer by christmas there are lots of other 3d printers that you could have by christmas but this one's only 99 dollars if i get it right now yeah they're they're playing that emotional game with you and, and again it might be justified. It might be a good machine. But when they start playing that game, the odds of it being good go down. So if there's any question in your mind, let me be the one to test it and tell you guys whether this was a good thing. There's a very good chance that you guys will be glad that you held off and waited for me. And if you want a sure thing, there are some other options for you. I hope that this helps you. And I hope that in the future... This process will help you make good decisions, make good uh, buys about what you're going to back and not take a critical look at what you're doing. And let's let's make 3D printing good for everybody. And let's let's, you know, try to identify the ones that aren't going to deliver, deliver from a distance and just kind of just kind of let's veer away from them and let's steer ourselves towards the people who we know that will deliver, that will make the world a better place by putting 3D printers in the hands of more people and making them easy to use. I hope that this helps. Thanks very much.